and out of the two times. I beat him before. Things are different now. And look, there you go. There's the priest. Wait. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's, that's exactly what I expect. Right, okay. Um, and now this time he's lost. It's now all bets are off, right? And actually, consensus downstairs is that Toaster's have been playing better than Ben. Yep. That is generally what we've agreed upon, I think, on the desk as well, both in terms of lineup and actual play. Toast Monster does appear to be the favorite because Ben really, really wants to ban that Warlock, so he has done. But he also really, really wants to ban that Priest because the single card difference for Toast Monster of running Rin in his control Warlock means that Big Ben basically can't leave it yep. open in case a mirror comes up again because not only if he played optimally he would still be unfavored and to be honest his play was far from perfect so uh, i know we talk about picking in conquest and what should you queue first is there ever an instance where toast starts with priest and stays with priest until he faces that warlock or does it not really matter I think because it's a random pick after yeah. whether you win or lose, uh, Toast Monster really can't get too much mind games going. He will obviously be hoping he can line up his Priest against the Warlock from Ben, but, but even having said that, he's lost the only time they've played that matchup. The problem is if the Warlock comes last and the Priest loses the first two games, then he would then have to win against the Warlock with his other two classes. Yep. So there's no surefire way of, of managing that. Fair, and I... Glad I asked the question then. Uh, easy answer. Well, we're going to jump into the first game of this bracket reset. Let's get it going. None can escape my fury. So, Toast Monster versus Big Ben. Winner takes that trophy. And it's going to be Toast Monster on the Priest. And Big Ben is going to be playing his Rogue. With a pretty nice little hand to get things going for Toast Monster. The Cleric on one against Rogue. Uh, while he didn't play it in this exact matchup, I believe, earlier on, uh, I think generally you're very happy to throw it down. This, I think you could consider a full keep here because Death is very nice against Rogue. Cleric is very nice against Rogue. Uh, and Circle wow. could be good. I can cons very much understand oh. the Circle being thrown, but the Death, I would have liked. Yeah, it's just frustrating to see the Circle thrown out and the Pyromancer drawn with the Cleric in hand. They're so, so close to being that combo that I've been <laughs> banging Death. on about all weekend. I love the combo. It's always been strong. It's still strong. Uh, cleric, Pyromancer, Circle of Healing to just draw your entire deck. Just imagine that game where we saw like 12 cards being drawn and burnt down, just rubbing his thighs <laughs> in the corner like, it's happening. Yeah. It. Finally. Well, yeah, I mean, you, know, you saw how excited I was in the game where everything was burned in, uh, in Ben's side. You should see a therapist about that. If you're that excited about seeing everything burned, <laughs> burn them all! Yeah. <laughs> but for Toast Monster, this is a fantastic start to get things going still because the Radiant Elemental, obviously, in many matchups, you want to keep for the full combo with Velen, Mind Blast, and uh, the Holy Smite as well. But in this particular matchup, as long as you're ahead on board, you're happy because for the moment, Toast Monster is going to have to be staying ahead in terms of minions because he doesn't have that board clear. So something we haven't actually spoke about this whole tournament is that, well, I think that gluttonous ooze mm. uh, that's been teched into Toast Monster doing essentially nothing <laughs> really in any of these matchups. Of course, destroying a dagger, this is probably the only time it's actually done anything this is rather good. valuable. This is fine. It's a three mana, three, three. It's a decent body on the board. It's removed the hero power. The armor, probably not that relevant, but still, I, I don't think this was bad. Oh, I really don't like this tech at the moment. Uh, there's not all too oh, many no. weapons floating about. Uh, if this was a Kabul Talon Priest, which I imagine it's very likely replacing For in sure. the deck, it would have been so much better. Don't get me wrong, I don't think the tech is good. I just think in this exact situation, the use of the card, absolutely I fine. I think it's, it's been fine. the only yeah. wrong <laughs> read that Toast has had of the whole tournament in yeah. general. Maybe he was expecting a few more weapons. Yeah. Because, I mean, what? are you worried about the skull, perhaps, in Warlock? No, I, he's... I, yeah. Banning Warlock, and I don't think you should expect all too much Q block because of how aggressive he's expecting it to be. It's a, it's a better tech in than Harrison, I would say, at the moment, because Harrison is definitely too slow to take out the aggressive weapons, but it's basically just expecting a lot of Paladin, I think, is the main reason to put it in, and that hasn't actually been that much Paladin fast. Uh, but for the moment, the Volspine having to take out uh, the Acolyte of Pain is actually pretty good for Toast Monster because it does mean that that Cleric is still knocking about and will keep drawing cards. Look at that. Especially when it can also gain tempo with Raz of the Change being played. What a turn for Toast Monster. Yeah, that's a card to pick up in turn five, isn't it? All right, over to Big Ben and his hand. He has some decent cards he can play. He cannot get rid of Raza. Wait, his patch has been played yet? Uh, no, I don't believe it has been summoned. Okay, so he can get rid of Raza with the with the patches, but 
this works nicely too. Shadow Step on the Foul Spine is actually much more efficient anyway. And I think you perfectly summed up that turn for Big Ben. It was just... Yeah, yeah, I summed it up by just babbling nonsense, basically. Because yeah. that's what this turn is. It's sort of nonsense. But the Valspine does tie it together nicely. The Valspine, I think, is actually a pretty respectable play here. Yep. Because you're not going to find all too much of a better target uh, in this matchup. And so yeah. getting the value out of it while you can feels very strong. And we've seen a lot of Priest versus Rogue throughout the throughout this tournament. And actually, it's gone pretty back and forth. Yep. Uh, we saw the... Of course, Anduin being drawn as the last card in one of the situations, which was pretty nuts. But now we compare it to this Not situation, this game. where <laughs> this game. you're going to get Raza on five and Anduin on eight. It looks just like your games of Hearthstone, Dawok. It does. I was actually <laughs> playing a few games of my break, and I think there were there were actually few where I didn't get Raza on five. And it wasn't it Toast watching. He was like, "Do you ever not draw <laughs> just, just Raza on five? Just three wins on the ladder. <laughs> Great." <laughs> and yet somehow I'm still only rank four. <laughs> <laughs> kind of says a lot, doesn't it? But that bad of this start of the season, is it? Correct answer. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, for Toast Monster, this is looking fantastic. All of a sudden, I think Boar was saying the other day he's never won as a rogue against Raza on five and yeah. win on eight uh, because you just don't. Uh, it's it's such a strong combo. Although having said that, if you were to do so, these are some very powerful cards. He's kind of got all facets of Rose play already covered. He's got tempo with the Bone Mare. He's got value with the Elven Minstrel, and he's got enough to push forward a strong board here, but also get a strong refill. At the same time, Toast Monster is at a very respectable life total for the moment, so we will be able to happily eat a turn of Bone Mare damage before throwing down the Shadow Reaper Anduin to mop everything up. Yeah, it's kind of a slow turn in the meantime, though. He doesn't really want to play Feast of the Feast on full health. Yeah, yeah it's just going to be Loot Hoarder oh, and heal up. Okay. It's a scary play for Big Ben. Like, he is <laughs> probably going to be assuming either Anduin or... Maybe Psychic Scream here, although it's very possible that Scream would have come down now probably before not gonna, Bone Mare. Probably not going to Bone Mare up the Firefly or South Sea yeah. Captain yeah, yeah. then. <laughs> yeah, if he is going to go with Bone Mare, I very much expect to see the buff on the Corridor Creeper. Uh, but at the same time, that is kind of weak to Shadow of Death. But considering Anduin is far and away the worst thing to would occur. And it's not over if Anduin comes down necessarily, I would say, because no. you have Leroy in hand, you can push a lot of damage, and your opponent maybe doesn't have any healing. <laughs> well, wow. but, but maybe they do. But maybe they do. Big Ben also has Sauna Chain Gang the into Elven Minstrel great. as a sort of follow up to this play. He can restock his hand, get these extra resources that will make it easier to draw Shadow Step as it's deck thinning, etc. Big Ben is not out of the running yet, but when Toast Monster has a start as strong as this one, it is going to be difficult to keep up with him. It's going to be very difficult indeed, but with some strong charges that have been buffed up by the Keleseth, like for example South Sea Deckhand, maybe in combination with a Leroy or with a Bone Mare on one of the following turns to get a charging, uh, buffed up charger, this could be maybe enough damage to push over the finish line from Big Ben's point of view. Uh, but to be honest, as we can see from Toast Monster, it's not even really going to be close. The healing, the Pyromancer, the Priest of the Feast, you've got tools to remove the board and to be yeah. healing yourself up as well. All the meanwhile, firing pings here, there, and everywhere. What? And there is more stuff. Yeah. On the plus side for Toast Monster... Wait, is there a negative side? For <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. On the plus <laughs> side for okay. Big Ben, let's yes. go to that side of the board. On the plus side for Big Ben, his Warlock should now get a free win. Yeah, in theory. <laughs> in theory. In theory. On paper. There's nothing that you should lose against. Man, it was struggling in the loss here. Oh, yeah, though. yeah, for sure. It, you know, losing to the Rogue and, to be honest, barely winning against the Aggro Druid. It wasn't a great spot. That was rough, yeah. Bye-bye, yeah. board. Yeah, completely clear board here. Uh, can even develop Priest of Feast as well. Maybe should have done that beforehand to gain a little bit of extra health at the expense of a bit of life on it. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't really matter. I'm happy with holding on with this. He can use it with the Circle of Healing, the Silence later on to clear the entire board whilst also healing in big chunks of three. Yeah, and I think the, the even more important thing is not giving a target to Valspine because the Minstrel was just played, so a Valspine very possibly going to be The situation Toast is in now it reminds me of a game uh, yesterday, I think it was, where he was so far ahead and he had definitely won and then he started to misplay a little bit because he got a bit overexcited. And I don't think there's much he could do to actually lose this game at this point, but he does just need to keep his focus, make sure he's looking out for anything, any sort of missteps he could make. 
Yeah, that's true. Yesterday, I believe it was the Lyra animation timer that meant he missed a bunch of damage. But yeah, like you said, make sure he starts his turns nice and early if he's going to be drawing cards, uh, not misstepping in any way. Because if he does make mistakes, he could still end up losing. Like, for example, here, uh, four damage off lethal if a shadow step were picked up, I believe. I actually expected Toast to be pinging off the Thalnus there. Just really? Digging through the deck, yeah. Uh oh, it's, it's Toast's kryptonite. But yeah, now, <laughs> now as long as Toast is fast enough, he should be good at this turn. He's got two zero mana spells to play with the Lyra. He gets ping every single time. Two decent silence targets. Shadow of oh. Death is beautiful as well with the Lyra. It was I starting mean, to maybe look like a board he couldn't deal with, but now obviously he can ping three times. Oh, he's gonna go Priest of Peace instead. Okay. So very really like this. This is Instead really defensive. Yeah. It's just saying I can win this game if I can play this defensive right here, right now. Yeah, actually, and at the same time, if he goes Lyra and Death, he ca he can't play either the Priest of the Feast or the Greater Healing Potion. No. And therefore, he is more vulnerable to Leroy Shadow Step. Whereas with this play, he does not lose to that ever. Also, in the situation where Big Ben leaves the Priest of the Feast up, then Lyra just single-handedly wins the game next turn with no chance of redemption for Big yeah. Ben. I think this is this is fine. And it is worth pointing out as well that there's only one Shadow Step left for Big Ben because the first came down on the Vile Spine. Uh, and then outside of that, there's obviously only one Leroy. Uh, so Toast Monster doesn't need to be too afraid of it, but... Uh, this is pretty scary now, though. Yeah, it kind of is. Leroy's got seven attack too, right? Or was it, was it already in the hand before Kelly? Already in the hand. Already oh, in the okay, hand. okay, okay, yeah. my bad. Uh, but at the same time, it can be Lyra, Great Healing Potion, with another two pings thrown out mm -hmm. from Circle of Healing and Silence which I think is probably the play. Yeah, Silence also allows uh, the, the extra ping on the Vast Spine. Slayer, we're dealing with that too. Uh, he's just looking at if he can get Shadow lethal on this thoughts. turn. I suppose maybe if he finds a Mind Blast and a couple of cheap spells off Lyra. But the longer he thinks, the less time he actually has to do it. If you're going to play Lyra, you have to decide that immediately. Right, you yeah. cannot waste time thinking, oh, wow. then decide to yeah. play it. As it happens, Shadow Visions pretty oh, nicely picks oh, up. He dies to Leroy Shadow Step. He does still die to Leroy Shadow Step, which is a horrifying thought as Ben gets one more draw to potentially He's end this out. game. He's just given Ben an out for lethal. <gasps> oh! oh no. Derek just almost oh jumped out of his goodness. seat when he saw that that card I mean, cost zero mana. I mean, I heard the players shouting downstairs. I think they're about five seconds behind. So they were just <laughs> ooing at the fact that Toast Monster gave an out to his opponent. Oh, they're just trolling you, mate. <laughs> yeah, that's probably it. Okay. Give you a, right. a secret tip, Darren. If you watch the players' reactions, usually you can tell before the cards actually <laughs> shown on our screen. Right. But uh, you think Ben would have probably leapt three feet in the air and done I, a backflip? Like you flip. did. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I think it would have been a down SWF kind of reaction. Uh, toned down maybe 50%, but of course now with the Greater Healing Potion, Toast Monster can put himself way out of range. He's got all these pings as well, and unfortunately, Big Ben's only out has now been crushed firmly in the hand of Toast Monster. Yeah, it's worth looking back at again, but I am fairly certain that Toast Monster had the ability to kill off everything other than the Chain Gangs on that turn with the Lyra and the Greater Healing Potion and shut out any chance for lethal any in any possible way for Big Ben. And he gave Ben an out in a game that should never, ever have been lost. Sometimes those things frustrate you more when your opponent gives you that opportunity and you, you know your opponent that hasn't played to their full potential. Yeah. That can frustrate you. You're like, I, I could have won that game. He should have been punished. He, I, I should have been able to punish him. And then you can keep that in your mind in the next game and the game after. Uh, I don't think Ben will, as he does concede. And Toast Monster takes a lead. And for the first time in this grand final, he, he is ahead. That's right. Great way to get things going for him. Getting the win with the Priest. Uh, to be honest, is expected in this particular series, I would say, as is the win for the Warlock from Ben. Ben's just like, I just don't know what to do anymore. No matter what I ban, it just doesn't work out. <laughs> yeah, and well, then you go back and look at your lineup. Like, if yeah. your opponent, I think in, we, it's pretty unanimously agreed upon, uh, Toast Monster has just built a better lineup than Ben in this particular tournament because even just the one tech card decision of Rin in the control of Warlock, he expected it to be banned the vast majority of the time anyway, so he knew it didn't really matter how good it was against aggro because it's still a control Warlock. He put in that one little twist, which means that, Toast, that Big Ben has to ban that Warlock away. So something Lorinda brought up when we were talking about the banning phase in the first series before the reset, he was saying, well, Ben can leave the Warlock up because he's got two chances at it anyway. Why did he take that risk of it maybe being aggro uh, 
when he could have just played the same game, in theory, that he'd already won before, and then took two stabs at that. Two stabs at banning the Warlock instead. Right, so he knows that that was not a reliable strategy he was going for, where he won with his Warlock against the opponent's Priest because he pulled out Velen with Dirty Rat. The vast majority of the time, that situation is simply not going to arise. Uh, so he thought, if I can, if it is Zoo from my opponent, I give myself a much more consistent strategy to win the game. Uh, because he didn't want to take the risk of maybe winning with the Warlock against the Priest again when it is a very unfavoured matchup. So it's going to be the Rogue versus the Aggro Druid this time for Toastmaster. Now, I know that his Aggro Druid has been teched specifically to beat Rogue, and I only assume it's the same the other way around. Eviscerate is strong in this sort of matchup, yep. as is the um, Galakacrawler, obviously. The two big techs which you do not expect to see in Tempo Rogue nowadays. Yep, both going to be very powerful in this matchup, and that's why he put it in, because he expected to find uh, these many, many aggressive matchups. Uh, Eviscerate, as you said, obviously fantastic to kill off a key minion before a buff can come down, and obviously Galaka Crawler hitting a pirate is incredibly powerful. Ooh, but here for Big Ben, very difficult choice because the ability to go crab on this turn into buff it up if it survives and if not go raven mark of yasharaj feels so good and if that was just a river crocolisk i think you'd do it without thinking but the potential upside of galaka crawler is it too strong to pass up i think it is against rogue you've got all of these pirates you've got south sea captain yeah. we've seen multiple times even in the last series i think we saw at one point just how strong a swing that turn is so i entirely agree with ben here not sure why he didn't play the raven though uh, i guess just playing around backstab but yeah why he's playing around the fact that it's a very reactive deck from his opponent so he doesn't want to give stuff onto the board uh for his opponent to deal with I disagree with that. Coin agent, you're giving a chance coin to coin agent. agent. I think that would be yeah. the main thing that he's... Uh, I guess, but the avoiding. problem is, Toastmaster's still going to have that card. If he's playing around it, then the, the logic is you continue to play around it, but you can't forever. It's fair. Very fair. But he wants to be playing around but, it at a time when he's further ahead on board. But okay, as well as playing into the Mark of your Shiraj, playing it on the same turn as that guarantees the yeah. cantrip. I guess I can get behind Yeah, half his turn three sucked otherwise. Half the yeah. time you are drilled into playing against a rogue that doesn't really have two drops as well. Maybe he wasn't expecting there to be anything that could be played yeah. apart from the SI7. Yeah, this is just playing into Eviscerate. <laughs> I mean, it's true. <laughs> you say it sarcastically. No, but I'm, there is, yeah. I'm serious. <laughs> Eviscerate is a card he knows oh, is in his deck. Okay, Pilfered Power is a strong card too, if Toast Monster can actually pull it off. I mean, he can do it right now if he wants to. Uh, just coin gain three mana. Oh, that's so, that's so strong. So good. Mm. But if he goes for Eviscerate this turn, though, how much stuff actually dies? I think he goes for Eviscerate here. I think that's the play. It's greedy if he goes for Pilfer Power. It's right? so greedy. And, that, and as you said, Derek, it's unlikely that Big Ben deals with much yeah. of this board, if yeah. any, next turn. Pilfer Power should be just as strong. And in fact, Toastmaster shadow stepping the Swashburglar to guarantee that that procs the Pilfer Power eventually. This is just Toastmaster's signature play, isn't it? Shadow stepping back <laughs> the Swashburglar preemptively for some mysterious combo. Again, this is old news now, but a lot of the top pro players say that the reason that Tempo Rogue is a difficult deck to play is literally just because of Shadow Step. Knowing when the correct time to play Shadow Step is, is a very difficult skill to perfect. And That's true. Toast Monster has his strategy, he's sticking to it, and it's been working for him so far. That's now for Big Ben on the reactive with his own Galaka Crawler. To an extent, he'll be happy he kept it, uh, but at the same time, it would have given him a bit of extra pressure onto the board early on. Yeah, and uh, it's still not a South Sea Captain. It's true, but at the same time, it's just a strong turn. If he were to go for Whoa. Crawler Power of the Wild for a minion, that would put him pretty firmly ahead. Oh, this pill for power. He doesn't know what's about to happen. <laughs> Is it definitely going to happen this turn, though? What is Toast Monster giving up by playing this pill for power? He's giving up SI? Tar Creeper or SI7 Agent, yeah. both of which would be a good way of getting himself onto the board. I think it's worth it, though. Three mana crystals. Yeah, starting with the swash is definitely the play. Of course. Do it. Uh, <laughs> Come okay. to the dark side. Okay, Dan Gaskin has made it 
extremely clear what his play this turn is, and yes. I agree wow. with him. I mean, you go Bone Mare next turn oh, exactly. without the coin. That's absurd. Yeah, you actually got one mana too much to do that. So, yeah, yeah. You, you can coin into the dagger as well. That's, that's not. I mean, he's probably going to be playing Corridor Creeper Bone Mare on the next turn, yeah. which on turn five <laughs> is mental. Take that, Druid. Yeah, and now that obviously the Galactic Crawlers does come down, but if he'd gone for it on the previous turn, maybe he would have pulled far enough ahead, denied one of the extra mana crystals off of Pilfer Power, whilst obviously he couldn't have known to play around that. Um, yeah, this has ended up being extremely strong for Ben there. That's a big board. Yeah, it's true. And it's like it's like the typical Druid thing. Like, Toast Monster just wasted his time, which he could have spent on Tempo, ramping up like Jay Druid usually do. And now Big Ben is just doing that same old punish that we see all the time. He's developed a huge board. Doesn't matter how much mana Toast Monster's got, it's not enough to deal with this. Kind of does matter how much mana he's got, though, because he's put up a really strong board. So if he's not dying on this turn, oh, that's uh, true. he's pulling really far ahead. Mark of the Lotus as well to buff up this board. You've got double Savage Raw yeah. at some moment to oh, push man. through. It's dirty. I mean, as good as Pilfered Power was, Ben is in such a fantastic position now. Yes, okay, the Bone Mare might be able to stall that plan, but it's where Toast Monster can get back ahead on this board. This is both uh, players just getting a wickedly powerful start uh, mm. for, both, for what both decks are trying to do. The Rogue obviously gaining mana crystals, which is not trying to do, but has helped a lot. And the Aggro Druid going tall and wide. Toast just needs to uh, swash into a Nourish or something, so he can, or a Wrath even, to get that fantasy. Or he needs to get into a UI or something. Well, like. UI would be the dream, right? <laughs> uh, he can't play it right now, so it's maybe not oh, perfect, perfect. Okay. But that, that he can play, though. Yes, that's Tr a very, very nice. The Corridor Creeper into the 3 5 Fandral Vilespine Slayer. It's a nice, big, chunky board. Portos Monster as well. He can coin out Swashburglar if he wants. He may want to hold on to these cards as a combo activator, though. But with 11, 6, and 6, that's. Uh, it's not quite 23 there. damage, I believe. Yeah. Able. Oh, that does that's it. That's lethal. That oh, does unbelievable. God. Patches being drawn is good. <laughs> we can finally we say can it. We can finally well, say it. I mean, again, if it was a South Sea captain. If it, it was a captain, it. it wouldn't have done if it. If it was deckhand, still would have done it, though. Still strictly better <laughs> to have the deckhand, guys. Come on. Badge is being drawn for the lethal. Have you ever seen anything more perfect <laughs> than that? Um, oh. I've seen it in Shaman quite a few times, actually. Yeah, Patches fair with Bloodlust, obviously. Again, deckhand, still better. <laughs> yeah. So, as a shake of the head from Toast Monster, but just to point out, he did gain like three mana crystals or something <laughs> ridiculous that game. As Ben. And evens this one up. It's 1-1. Oh, one, and I, I have a feeling, guys, I think that we might go to a game five here. And it's going to be... Oh, it's you know what? fantastic. I'm just glad we don't have another Warlock Mirror. I'm glad that you three uh, got to tank that one. While I, I was... loved that Warlock. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I was watching from the audience with Leroy and Dan. As I said, it was a very exciting game. But I just let Darok cast it. <laughs> <laughs> I chipped in now and then with a few memes in there. It worked out quite well. I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. We've got a formula, haven't we? It tends to work out. Strong division of labor. The ESL Premiership formula. <laughs> I mean, you're being paid for this, right? Yes. Yeah, lucky. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> game number three. Uh, Toast Monster has the choice between Rogue and Druid, and Ben has the choice between Rogue and Warlock. So at some point, you think Ben is going to get a victory with this Warlock. Yep. It's just such a big difference for him because, yes, the Druid has a nice matchup against the Rogue, but the Warlock is so good against both of the decks for Toast Monster. I would be so surprised if it can't pick up at least one victory. But... Oh, well, it has to pick up one, but if it doesn't pick up a victory. <laughs> but both of Toast Monster's decks have been teched to beat the Rogue. And yes, that is that's like, true. heavily teched. I was talking to his practice partner, yeah. and he was saying, yeah, like in the last series when it was Rogue versus Druid, uh, I said, oh, yeah, essentially it turned out that Toast had a good chance. So pretty nice starting hand once again for Ben. I think it's impossible to get a really bad starting hand uh, when you're on the coin with this Warlock against a Rogue because so many cards are so fantastic. I could see Cobalt Librarian, Beetle, and Hellfire all being kept because they're all pretty strong in this matchup. Uh, but Falk, do you think there's cards you're looking for even more heavily than what we've got here? For Big Ben? Uh, yeah. No, I think this is probably just fine to start with. Yeah. He wants to pick up Lackey by turn five, or turn four, I guess, if we're being greedy. But this is great. You've got some armor gain, you've got your cantrip, you've got Dirty Rat, which 
it's sort of the dodgiest card of the bunch, but could do some great things if paired with a Siphon Cell later on. I think I think Ben's very happy with this. Yeah, I think he Defile is. is the one card that, in, in your dream hand, <laughs> Defile is the card that you'd want to add to this set. Go for it. Especially. <laughs> Dan's going to go away and try Well done, Dan. D Dan's going to go away and try Aggro Druid with Pilfered Power. And now I know he is. That was a deg. Big Aggro Druid that run, uh, ran Pilfered Power. Briefly. Right? Yeah, briefly. Yeah, I think it was only Mitsuhide who was actually playing it. But he had a bit of success with it. So I well. think we, we brought it up in the last series as well. The Eviscerates actually could become very apparent in this game. Like if you manage to batter your opponent down to very little health and yep. they start putting Void Lords in the way, you can be like, hey, oh, got some Eviscerates for your sunshine. It's true, but I'm not sure that uh, Toast Monster is going to get to that position because his board at the moment is very vulnerable to board clear. And that's the main benefit that Keleseth affords you in this matchup is that your minions don't die to Hellfire and Defile. Whereas in this instance, they absolutely are. And while the Forbidden Ritual is interesting, because if it can slip by a Hellfire or Defile, it could be a lot of damage. Uh, the Leroy and the Eviscerate on its own are not going to be getting the job done here, I don't think. It's just... So many walls that the Warlock can put up in the Rogue's way. It's the reason. It's just the power of Void Lord. It's crazy that some players thought Void Lord should cost seven when it was first announced. Lul. Absolutely insane. <laughs> Who said that? Tic Tac. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, it was Tic Tac. Oh, that's right. Sorry for naming a shame of your stream. Dan did literally. <laughs> Dan Gaskin, that Funny is thing. not Dan Falcon. I knew. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. Classic. Uh, but for Ben here. That's not bad either. Yeah, the, the board clears he's got covered. He just needs to find strong taunts. Obviously, Craze Worshipper is a decent way to get things going, but it's not a very good stat line whatsoever. Uh, so he needs to make sure that he cl he's clearing stuff in the early game, which he can carry on to do. But then he needs to find Lackey, hopefully in combination with a Dark Pack, mm -hmm. to pull out that Void Lord, which will lock out the game. He is at 16 already, which is a little bit on the dodgy side. Alarm bells are going to start to be ringing here. Obviously, come turn 8, he can clear everything with Nether. Turn 9, he can coin out Nazoth if he wants to. Yeah. But the problem is surviving up until that point. So it's a little scary, but at the same time, turn eight is only when Leroy's Shadow Step can happen. Uh, and before then, the Eviscerate has already been used. He's got a couple of taunts. He's got a bit of heal with the Mistress of Mixtures. So I think Ben is perfectly happy for the moment, especially because he's got Siphon Soul to clear up any one big minion that comes down on the following turn, say it were an Edwin Van Cleef or something like that. But it was the previous series where Ben had one of the perfect starts that we've seen for Warlock. We went, yeah, this game's over. And then he lost it. He did lose it. That's a good point. I don't think this is the same situation. I think he may have learned from his mistakes. That was an odd game. It was a very it was odd a game. was a particularly Dan. odd game. Yeah, Toast doesn't have a very strong and aggressive hand, to be honest. Obviously, the burst damage of Leroy is nice. But in terms of actually fighting for the board against a Warlock, it's not what he wants to be doing because Tar Creeper doesn't really apply any damage. Obviously, the backstabs can only hit this one minion, which makes a bit of difference, but you still have to sacrifice your board into it. Where's Bone Mirror at? Good question. <laughs> Why doesn't it cost six mana? <laughs> also, well, that's an awful question. I could tell you. <laughs> I could just slap you in the face, and that would be an answer as to why Bone Mirror doesn't quote this. Down cost six. <laughs> Why does <laughs> Bone Mirror not cost six mana? Yeah. Where's Bone Mirror, and why does it? Uh, sorry, cost sorry. Six uh, mana? <laughs> if you're gonna quote me, Dan, sorry. get it right. Okay, just tweeting it out now. <laughs> So wondering if it's worth leaving this up because he's more vulnerable to Hellfire, but could potentially get in a little bit more damage on later turns. I do like trading in here because so much stuff punishes it. It could be a Spellstone, a Hellfire, all that kind of good stuff to clear it off. Mm, the good stuff. Sometimes you need the good stuff to help you win a Hearthstone game as well. It's better than the bad stuff. Correct. And Leroy Jenkins being pulled out then just completely obliterates any chances of Leroy Shadow Step shenanigans. Yeah, but no way to kill it off right now. It is scary for Ben. So he's wondering, OK, what happens if Activator plus Vile Spine comes down now? Uh, that would be nine damage coming through, which is fine still. So he's wondering, can I get away with tapping? Side effects. Uh, yeah. But this is just even safer, uh, gaining a ridiculous amount of health. He just needs to survive now because he has that eventuality in Nazoth the Corruptor. I've never heard anyone call it by its full name. Just feeling a bit formal as we enter the finals. Rather than <laughs> informal, as I was told by the barrage <laughs> manager. It's funny because Cthune is just Cthune. Obviously, mm -hmm. Yogg-Saran sometimes gets called Hope Send, but I've never heard Yusharaj Rage Unbound said mm -hmm. all the way through in a cast. He's moving away from that. 
It's trying to go for a share thing. Just like just like when you <laughs> chopped off Heroes of War Warcraft, you just chop off Rage Unbound. Yeah. Yeah. Just go for something a little bit more hip down with the uh, with the treants. Yay, Shaji. <laughs> hey, Barnsey. So I mean, Toast, oh, oh. at this point, Toast is literally just doing what he can to put anything on the board and hope that there is nothing in Ben's hand. When he knows that there is always going to be something in Ben's hand that is going to be influential because it is Control Warlock and it is a filthy, smelly, disgusting deck. Absolutely right. This Defile is perfectly good here because of, I'm not even sure, the Rogue doesn't have anything that really capitalizes on a wide board like Bloodlust, Savage Roar, yep. Unidentified Mall, stuff like that. It's just not in their arsenal. But just getting rid of it with a Defile there was perfectly good to mitigate yeah. about six damage. It's funny now that Big Ben doesn't even need to use the Twisting Nether. He can just pop down the Spellstone, I guess, Mistress of Mixtures, whatever. whatever. Coin Zoth or Coin Gul'dan and then play the other one after that. I mean, Leroy's gone. It, it yep. doesn't matter anymore. He could kill off this board to deny Bone Mare going into his Nazoth turn because he does want an empty-ish board yeah. going into his own Blood Reaver Gul'dan. Alternatively, he could just tap pass. It just doesn't matter anymore, does it? Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, it doesn't. That's, that's not that's, a good play. That's, that's a not little bit do, risky just because it's just a bit apathetic in terms of what you should be doing well, at this course. point. But Mistress Spellstone Side looks good to me. Yeah, sure. Trust. Anything in Ben's hand would have looked good. <laughs> I think... I, I, I'm slightly shocked that that hasn't been a concede already from Toast, but... He doesn't know there are two Tendrops in a Big Ben's hand, to be fair, along yeah. with that coin. The thing is, okay, so the worst kind of situations would be he's got double Lackey and double Void Lord, but in that instance it would have been coin Void Lord. Um, if he's just got a whole bunch of Dark Packs, Syph um, Siphon Souls, Mortal Coils, even that is fine, he just wins. There's nothing Toast Monster can do here. Which means Ben is going to be going up, I would imagine, to yes. a 2-1 victory. There's no imagining. It's going to happen. It's going to happen, yeah. Which means he's going to have to get a victory with only his uh, Aggro Druid left. Who's? Ben, or is it just his Rogue left? It's just, it's his, just rogue his rogue, left. just yeah. his rogue, which actually is not good because Toast Monster, as you said, Falk, has heavily teched yeah. his own to win the mirror. That coin was just going to sit in Big Ben's hand forever, wasn't it? Pretty much. <laughs> not going to coin out a 10 drop on turn 9, then it's just never going to be played. <laughs> Who cares? Good position for Big Ben now. What is Toast going to do about this? Yeah, I mean, you're going up against his rogue, but you're also only one game away from giving the victory to your opponent. Yeah. One game away from Ben lifting that trophy and being crowned the champion of the ESL Premiership, which is something that he maybe at this point was expecting. I mean, as I said before, he is a very confident young man when he came into this tournament, and rightly so. But if anyone's going to stop that confidence, it's probably Toast, and it's probably with these decks that do yeah. have those Galaka Crawlers. For I example. have heard the word smug thrown around amongst the pro players oh. in, in description of Ben. Oh, well, there's a little bit of potty stirring from you, Daniel. There is, there is some potty stirring. Oh. Um, but, you know, he's definitely a deserving winner. If anyone's going to grasp that away from him, though, Toast is in an okay spot to do so, as Derek and I keep saying. Yeah. These decks are nicely teched to beat Ben. And uh, this is going to be this is going to be an exciting final few games, I think. I agree. I think apart from his priest, which I don't like the tech decisions in, the rogue beats the rogue mirror. The warlock beats the warlock mirror. Everything just seems to beat his opponent in the mirror. And Ben here, although he is unfavored in this mirror, as we've said time and time again, he's got a great way to kick things off. <laughs> Okay, that is a very great way of kicking this off now with the pickup of the Corridor Creeper and the Prince Kalisar. Yeah, mm. uh, there's just a couple of things missing to make this uh, a lockout victory for him. Obviously, he needs uh, a Patches Puller in order to pull ahead in the mid stages of the game. Fireflight is a great way to start the game off, though. Uh, and then ideally, he's going to be looking for a Vile Spine because that is the, maybe the one way that Toast Monster could apply enough tempo in the mid stages of the game to pull it back. Shadow Step would be nice as well, wouldn't it? Would love that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah that would be nice off the top. Again, I think Kelliseth has turned up far too much this tournament. Every tournament, he seems to turn up a lot. <laughs> it's a strong card. I agree. What can I but, say? You know, from Toast Monster, it's not like one player got it and one player didn't. Toast Monster isn't running. Yeah, he's not. So yeah, it's his own fault. Yeah, his advantage will come into play if he gets Galaka Crawlers. Mm -hmm. But even then, Ben will have been playing around that. I think any pirate other than South Sea Deckhand would have been thrown away. 
Agreed. Yeah, you 100%. I know I, I joked earlier when I said Ben would just be used to playing against a rogue that doesn't have, uh, that has Kalos and doesn't have two drops. Yeah. He knows full well what he needs to play against, how he loses this yeah. matchup. So Toast Monster just going to throw down South Sea Captain now, buffing up patches and making this trade happen, happen at reducing the cost of Big Ben's Corridor Creeper. But things are looking okay for Ben moving into the next few turns. He's got the Elven Minstrel that he can combo right now if he wants to. Okay, Toast Monster changed his mind. Derek, what, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I love this play over the Captain because it protects the patches. But the thing is, it's not a particularly good trade. And just throwing down Captain on an empty board on turn three is real scary because your opponent hasn't pulled patches out yet, so you don't want to give them a target for that. They haven't used backstab, SI, all these kind of things which you really don't want to have a strong target for. So keeping the patches here and going for the uh, Tar Creeper instead, I think is a little bit more resilient to some of those tricks like backstab or patches. So you could use your deck hand plus your backstab and a dagger here if you wanted to clear everything off the board. Uh, of course, you don't have to use the backstab if you want to keep it as an activator, which looks like Ben is going to do so. Yeah, wonder if it's worth going for coin into Corridor Creeper. Mm. It's the turn before Valspine can come down for Toast Monster. So I think because of that exact reason, I can respect it. If it was a turn later, I would hate it. Uh, but because of the fact it can hopefully take a value trade before Valspine can come down with a backstab, it's looking very strong for Ben indeed. We can keep saying it until we're blue in the face, but having a cheap 5-5 five -five come down early when your opponent doesn't have a cheap 5-5 five -five come down, it's just such huge boast in the tempo matchup. Uh, boost, sorry, in the tempo matchup. It's just always worthwhile. Play it as soon as you possibly can every time. And now for Toast Monster, with the patches already pulled out from the deck, the main tempo swing until turn five has left his deck. But the Eviscerate is also classically one of the strongest tempo swings available in classic Hearthstone. But not even going to go for that here. So he wants to hit that Corridor Creeper with the Valspine. That is clearly what he is indicating with this line of play. And it's looking like it's actually going to be absurdly powerful with the Minstrel coming down in combination with the Creeper here. Toast Monster needs follow-up, don't get me wrong. This is looking to be as it so often is in Rogue Mirrors, uh, to be who can get the Bone Mare down first. Yep. But Ben has just been thoroughly blown out here on this turn. But now the Onus is back on Ben. He picks up a second Earthen Minstrel. Uh, Elven, I always say that card wrong. Elven Minstrel you from do. the first. Wait, I always call it Earthen for some reason. You I do. I don't know why I did that. Uh, which isn't ideal, but at least he can use this to pick up the next two cards. Yeah. And at least it's a 4-3. It's mental. The, oh my god, this turn and these pickups are fantastic for Big Ben. Big ben. He doesn't want any other cards at this point. Uh, Valspine into Valspine is absurd, or Valspine into Bone Mare is absurd. And there's just nothing in hand that Toast Monster can do to bring this back. Yeah, I think we're close to crowning a Premiership Champion. Uh, you were saying it's whoever can get that Bone Mare first, and I was going to say those Earthen or Elven Minstrels, whatever you want to call them, they're going to be the big kickers. They I'm just going to call it Minstrel from minions. now on. I, I mean, as long as you say one of my favourite chocolates, then I'm going to be happy okay. anyway, Dan. So yeah. either way, it's good for me. As uh, Toast does what he can to remove the board, does put an Edwin down, but this is such a strong follow-up from Ben. Valspine Slayer, such a disgusting card. A buffed up Valspine as well, <laughs> potentially even with a backstab uh, if you wanted to, to clear off the board to prevent Bone Med, which I think is the play actually, because outside of that, what are you saving a backstab for at this point? Mm -hmm. No idea. Yep. You just you just go ahead, you just use it. Of course you do. One more time, it's all about tempo. And at the moment, Big Ben, not only does he have the tempo, but he also has the value in his hand. Yep, he's got card advantage, he's got board advantage, he's going to have health advantage very soon as well. There's nothing outside of potentially a swap burglar roll that can be done for Toast Monster to wrestle this back. And Ooh, that's okay, actually. <laughs> was that, was kind that the of noise juicy. of the Doomerang you just made? <laughs> <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> well, it means that he can not only use it to deal three damage to him, yeah. but now he can re-equip the Shadow Blade, get immunity for another turn, and then swing into the Vastbind Slayer. As far as Swashburglar cards go, that's not a bad one. It's not bad, and it allows him to kill off one extra minion, but because Ben played uh, the Flame Elemental as well last turn. There's still the ability for Bone Mare to come down here uh, and apply a huge presence onto the board, which means Leroy will very likely be able to close it out for Big Ben. That's a pretty good roll to get, but I still don't think it's quite enough. And the Galaka Crawler is meant to be the savior of Toast Monster in this matchup, <laughs> having to eat his own pirate if he's uh, even going to play it. 
All right, just going to hold on to it for now. I understand that. But Bone Mare able to come down and turn that flame elemental into something uh, much more aggressive looking. Turn, turn that, that frown flame upside, upside down. down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> turn that flame elemental upside down. <laughs> and I was going to... It was probably deserving of a Banter Battle Ring if you had gone down that route, Dan. Do you want to have a take two? <laughs> yeah. No. No, no, okay. no. no. <laughs> if you said that, I wouldn't ring my Banter Bell. So how's that? Well, you don't no, have, have one. one. <laughs> Tell you what. Yeah, I'll give it to you afterwards if you want. The banter about that is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, after the show, I can take it home with you. <laughs> and this is going to be it for Ben with the Leroy coming down to deliver perfect lethal. We have our UK Hearthstone Prem Season 4 champion. Yeah, quite deservedly as well. It's been an incredible season for him after failing at the last Premiership. He does throw his arms aloft and as he should because this man has been so dominant all season. He nailed this tournament meta yeah. and he has played phenomenally throughout today and yesterday. It's finally